half hour and the Speaker of the House, and this is Wynn Moses, he's the Commerce uh, uh, Chairman, who uh, reviews utility issues and he's an expert on it. In fact, I know when you were mayor, I came down here for a few. Uh, we had a news conference right here, as a matter of fact, in those days. Mm -hmm. and that was 100 years ago. <laughs> not, not quite. And, and I'm proud to have him as a Commerce uh, Chairman because he is an expert on these issues. There's been several, I guess, uh, disruptions in state government lately, and the latest is this whole thing about uh, the IRC commissioner, and they've he's fired. But this is not just him alone that has to deal with this. He was actually given a clearance by the Ethics Commission, and there's several other people who have been cleared by the Ethics Commission. David Hardy was given a clearance. Scott Storms has been given clearance, and he goes and works for Duke, who got a pretty big raise, and he go into the specifics of that. And the IURC executive director, Michael, that issue alone. But there's several others that happen to serve a revolving door. I mean, they work for uh, one of the governor's commissions, and they end up going out and uh, working for those who appear before that commission. We passed a, a state ethics bill and included the governor in the beginning. And one of the, the things we did is we tightened up appearances, have tightened up transparency. And one of the things we tried to do is get uh, a prohibition on pay, pay to play. This is what brought down the governor of Illinois, getting giant road checks as he's putting out bids for roads. We had that prohibition in our bill when we sent it over to the Senate. The Senate chose to take it out. This calls for greater enforcement of the whole ethics structure. If you're going to have a prohibition about people working for a company you've regulated, as we have a prohibition that we can't go out in the hallway and lobby our former colleagues for one year, then that should apply at every branch of government. And that's what our, our focus and mission should be. Representative Moses is an expert on the, I want to call it the devastation that's been caused by these increases, which I think are now all tainted. Everyone under his uh, guidance, David Hardy's guidance, uh, ought to be uh, reviewed and questioned. The governor is saying he will do that, but we want to be a lot more specific. So when you want to Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad you're, you're working on, on this issue across the state of Indiana. That is the same as the state budget for schools, streets, highways, prisons, uh, uh, state parks. So this is even bigger than property taxes, or even bigger than the state taxes that, that, that you pay. And it means that we have to be very careful, and we have to find new ways. So the purpose of this meeting is, this is the beginning. We are now going to look at possible additional investigations. Um, the Ethics Committee is appointed by the Governor. The IURC is appointed by the Governor. He wants to have his special uh, Inspector General, which is kind of a personal prosecutor, investigate this. That's probably not open enough. I think we're going to have to have some other people look at this, and that's been suggested by other state senators and state representatives. That's one of the examples. Secondly, we're going to have to look at ways to open up the IURC so it has more public input. So these people who are making those rulings understand what happens to, to we regular uh, rate payers. There may be some elected positions, there may be some that we have to have confirmed by a House or, or a Senate. We will be in the next few months looking very carefully at how to make sure that these uh, charges against us, which are immense, are, are reviewed and safe for the average citizen. Uh, there is a paper process, it's a big one. I've sat through many of these meetings, uh, even here in this room we used to have, have meetings, and it takes a long time, it's kind of boring in, in, in actual fact, but it's not boring when you get to the end and you see the total number of dollars. NIPSCO presently has an electric case that they want 10% uh, uh, or 16%, depending on who you talk to. A number of them are back in there. I'm concerned that, in fact, several of these cases uh, that have been reviewed by these people who uh, were at, out looking for jobs in some fashion should be reviewed, too. That it, it taints the entire amount of them. And there is a collusiveness between the utilities so that even if it's just this Duke situation, it's not. In fact, it's all of those situations all of the possibilities that they may in fact come for business. So we have a very dangerous circumstance that we're going to, uh, with the speaker's help here, explore over the next couple of weeks uh, uh, and going into, into the session to see if there isn't a better way to do this. But most of all, I think we have to be very careful that this 
uh, internal prosecutor, the inspector general, is the one that's going to do the investigation of the people who appointed him. That doesn't work very well in practice. If that will open up There's the a pattern and a trend on this. Uh, Mitch Rue, who became uh, the welfare director, I have a different mm -hmm. name for it, uh, he was vice president of ACS. He came here and so had a billion dollar deal privatizing Medicaid and food stamps. Uh, so he goes here from one company and then enhances, uh, you will, if you will, the second company. The um, John Bales worked for the governor, became his uh, real estate man, and there's known that he is an interest in three, or at least three, minimum of three, of the now uh, private entity welfare offices, and his rent is way above the average. It continues with uh, another gentleman who was the head of the, I think it's uh, IEM. His name is Tom Easterly, and he uh, worked for a utility, and now with IDM, he's supposed to check them for pollution and other uh, regulations. So this is a pattern that we must stop, and we can't just do it in a single drop by saying, this person's fired, and we're just gonna move on. We've gotta change the whole system so that people know we know that we aren't treated this way with the high interest rates. I'd like to add to that too, uh, and I view it even more narrowly. Many of the people that have been appointed to be regulators are coming out of the industries, the utilities, in which they've been well paid. Uh, Mr. Hardy, who's the head of the IORC, was a longtime counsel for the predecessor to Duke. Mr. Easterly came out of a uh, uh, utility in order to be in charge of EPA. Um, the fellow in, in the environment also came from a coal uh, business. Uh, the utilities are, in my opinion, having much too, too much say in these matters and much too much strength. And I think we have to find a way to open it up. We have not examined this very much. It's been kind of a, a sidebar given all the other uh, cap and, and, and property tax things. But it is clear that it's been to our detriment that we are losing money and, and by having our rates increased, in my opinion, uh, by having this go on. So uh, this just highlights the situation when, when the governor fires somebody, it does not, in fact, solve it. We've got a long way to go. One point that uh, Representative Moses brought out, a gentleman named David Jones is now the enforcement uh, lawyer for IDM. He came from a coal company as its lobbyist. So mm -hmm. you see this disconnect. Is there a question? Senator 